Welcome back to the coverage of Euros weekend, as I like to call it. The best Yu-Gi-Oh! event of the year for all the European players. We have eight players that played consistently, successfully throughout the past year. And uh, they are now duking it out in the top eight playoff. Four of them have already been knocked out of competition. One of them is already 100% going to Worlds. That is Joshua Schmidt and we just saw that in the last match. Tin Kapui lost the last round but he's going to be going up in the third place playoff against one of the two guys that are now going to be playing. The winner of this match is directly going to Worlds. The loser, as we said, has another shot in our last feature match of the day. This right now is going to be the second to last feature match of the day. The stakes couldn't be higher and I'm, I'm happy to say this, it's time to duel. So, in the red corner we got Rafael Neven from the Netherlands. Hey! Yay! You got the hometown advantage. Um, how does it feel winning the first round? Because now you have two chances to go to Worlds. Yeah, it was the, the one round I was the most afraid of uh, because it, the stakes were the highest and um, the entire season could be over in a, a finger snap. But luckily, yeah, I, I, I won that one. Now, technically, you have two chances. But seen, like I've seen the opponents uh, this round, next round, that amazing players. So two, two chances is still nothing there, there are no buys in this tournament yeah, there aren't. Yeah. all right so the first round you didn't know what your opponent was playing you're going into it blind uh, second round you have seen his deck list what do you make of that um, I like uh, that the organization did that because uh, the one who would watch the stream would otherwise has an advantage so I know uh, we're playing the same deck basically not no one's playing really anything spicy um, of course it's a combo mirror which always involves a little bit more of RNG, RNG that you want, like the die rolls important, drawing the side cards really important, and yeah, that's just a sad reality of both players picking uh, the, one of the strongest decks in the format. I didn't do the interview with you in the first round, but I could tell even sitting over there that you were super nervous. How are you feeling right now? Uh, a little bit worse. <laughs> okay, please have a seat and hope to get better. In the blue corner, we got Jonas Koschel from Germany. Hey, Jonas, you also got the win in the first match and what a match it was. It looked like there was no way for you to come back and then suddenly everything turns. How does that feel? I said I have no clue how I, how I actually won the game and yeah, I, I hope I can repeat it. But, yeah, <laughs> yeah but we might have to pick up the pieces if that happens again. But then again, you both have two chances to uh, to go to Worlds. Um, does it add to the pressure or is it slightly less pressure than compared to the first match? It's a little bit less. Okay, so, so you're going a little bit better. I mean, three out of your four guys that are now in this, in this exclusive seat um, are having a chance to go to Worlds. How are you feeling about playing against Rafael now? Um, I think we play like three times, maybe more, and I don't have a good record uh, <laughs> against him. So. Is it 3-0 uh, or is it uh, you I won? I think it's 2-1, but okay. I don't know, maybe, maybe... So it's not completely hopeless? Maybe, maybe it's even 2-0, <laughs> he, he said 2-0, so might be. I, I, I don't remember exactly. Rafael is not going to give it away, he's just going to be like, no, I crushed... You know, you never know. <laughs> I, I crushed you every time. All right, guys, uh, please also have a seat. We're going to switch you. We're going to switch you in a second. But first, I want to do the die roll with you. So we know who's going to go first. Two? Yes. <laughs> I roll, yes, of course. All right. Jonas has got a seven. That's very average with two dice. And that is a one, two, three. Uh, who goes first? Uh, I want to go first. All right. Jonas is going to go first. These two guys are going to be switching seats in just a second. With that, I think we're going to be ready to take this away. Marcello Barberi and Daniel Neville on commentary. Welcome back to Utrecht. This is another match-off where we are playing to send a representative to the World Championships. Yeah, it's going to be an insane one here. Uh, if I was uh, Jonas, uh, I would have answered to uh, Rafael saying it, it was actually 2-0 since he said it's 2-1. It is mm -hmm. going to be 2-1 after this match. Powerful. That would, would have been a good comeback for him. And he did, won the, he did win the ride roll, so he has very good chances to do so. As Rafael said, uh, in a Thunder Dragon Mirror match at the moment. Game one, I would say, is definitely polarized by the die roll. Yeah. Uh, after siding, we saw it 
gets very different. Uh, Joshua uh, lost the title against Dinka, but he was still able to win the match in the end. So it is definitely dependent on the side that cars more. For sure. Um, but for game one, they're looking both uh, very good to take this, uh, this tournament, I would say. Uh, their deck lists are pretty much similar. We've seen uh, Joshua was probably the only one playing uh, a slightly different version of the deck without Thunder Dragons. Yeah, he was playing Thunder Dragons Light without the Thunder Thunder stuff less, because yeah. <laughs> it breaks. Um, outside of that, I don't think uh, there is too much we can add right now. We're probably going to go into more deep detail as the match progress. For sure. So, uh, yeah. I mean, Jonas, we know he has a slight edge here because he has won the dice roll, and that's quite big. Um, Absolutely. So we're going to see if he is able, maybe we'll see uh, someone beating Dinka's record of uh, sniping all the dangers. That could be absurd, but uh, I would say we just go to the match real quick. So uh, let's just take a look at the ends and what we got going on real soon. Uh, as a reminder, they are Jonas is uh, wanting, is basically I would say that Rafael is the last man standing against Germany at the moment. For sure. So in the top four, we had three Germans and Rafael. The only non-German players is from the Netherlands. We're uh, in the Netherlands. We are right in the now. Netherlands. So everyone, as you can see, has the home advantage. So everyone is wanting Rafael to at least be uh, the last man standing against Germany. Otherwise, we are going to have a full team of Germans. And uh, we're going to have to see what comes out of it. Um, what do you think uh, is going to happen in this match Like as we go to the side deck, let's say? I mean, first off, game one, it's going to be very much a case of hoping that you don't have a hand which is clunky, yeah. because that's kind of game. Absolutely. Uh, so you need to really hope that you get a playable hand. Uh, if Jonas is able to get a strong hand game one, he's able to just lock it up really nicely. Yeah. Going into the side decks, we start seeing things like no materials and artifact lancias, and those let you interact a lot more yeah. with the Thunder Dragon deck in a way that, uh, you know, we saw Ash Blossoms and we saw Ghost Ogres earlier in this event, and they just aren't as impactful. Being able to know material and saying, this card's stuck here, yep. and particularly if it has bad link arrows, it can cause problems for guard dragon combos and such. There's a yeah, lot of there are a lot of more impactful entrops, and I think this event is actually very helpful once again for people attending uh, the European Championship tomorrow. Uh, you should definitely look up uh, what happened today because we got a lot of infos for you guys. Uh, I would say one of the best infos was probably how good Drone and Lock is against this deck. Yes. Uh, we are, let's, I mean, I think we are going to see it for this game. So our players just picked up their cards. So let's go to the table. Okay, so. It is very hard to break with this deck, but we saw Jay Quincy actually resolving a second slide and still not having much going on, so it is definitely possible. I mean, the saddest thing is always when your second slide draws two more second slides. Absolutely. But we're seeing a very good end from uh, Jonas. Yep. Uh, he has a uh, Crusadia and a Danger, which is already very good. On top of that, he has even Collapse Serpent and Thunder Dragon, so this end is just absurd. Yeah, for sure. We're going to see the full, uh, full combo. Uh, he is playing the price card as well, I believe. Uh, yes, he is. Uh, he added it last second. Yes, Jonas, so. Jonas actually came up to us yeah. after the lists were submitted and was like, I wasn't given my price card yet. Yeah, so. can I actually play it? He was one of the few yeah. guys who asked uh, if it was possible to play the price card. It was, so it worked out for him. I so. mean, you might as well. It's a pretty cool card. It is. I mean, Chaos Emperor Dragon itself is such an iconic card and then to have this updated chaos emperor king of armageddon is really cool uh, and it, it just does so much that this deck wants to do yes and uh it is a very good addition like also it has a very nice synergy where if you open uh, Sekka's light then you can just use it for your combos as a level 8. But if you do not open Sekka Slide, then you can use it as a scale, which is also relevant because it says you can pay 1,000 and get back a dra uh, Banished Dragon. For sure. Yeah. Then it goes on top of the extra, and you can summon it from there, just like you could summon it from end. So it's such a good card. Yeah, it, it just generates a free card for a 1,000 life points. And I'll take that trade pretty much any day. Always, like, yeah. It's just like Upstart Goblin, you know? You give the opponent 1,000, that's fine. <laughs> yes. I get an extra card.
Except this actually Spatter. generates yes, an This extra actually card. generates a plus one. Yeah. And it gives you a body on the board, which is all you want to do with this deck. You just want to summon a bunch of guys and yep. must them together into links. Do you think like, um, people watching this event are going to be influenced walking into Euros tomorrow? Because, like, top four is literally four combo decks. Yeah, I, I think people will be influenced. I don't know if you would be justified in saying that Thunder Dragon is the best deck for this event because of the points I playoff. Agree. Because, like we saw when talking to the players, round one was so crucial in this event. Because if you lost that, you were just out, at least here. Yep. You know, they can take the loss and they can go on and play in the third place playoff. But so I think that biased a lot of players towards playing Thunder Dragons, even if they don't think it performs as well yeah. in the general field. I do think it is the best deck in general, like at the moment, but at the same time, uh, uh, it was very known. And after today, it is probably like super known even more. Yeah. And that means that people are going to pick up on uh, Drone and Logbird, Artifact Sanctum, if you're playing uh, Salomon Great, I'd say, uh, with Trap Trick. Uh, we saw how. Uh, it completely shut down uh, round one for Joshua when he was up against it. So yeah. if people are expecting it, it is definitely uh, slightly worse, but... I mean, so if we look at the interaction in the format, so decks like Orcist have a really tough time dealing with cards like Artifact Lancia. Um, decks like Sky Striker can often have difficulty with things like Drill and Lockbird. But I don't think Thunder Dragon has a single silver bullet that really deals with yeah. it. So regardless of whether or not people are more prepared for the deck, the deck just has a lot of natural immunity. Particularly if you look at the classic builds of Pure Thunder from when it was first released um, earlier back around YCS London. You know, there weren't any cards that interacted with it really. And it still has that case where you know, even if your opponent interrupts you a little bit, you can often just end on a Colossus, and that's quite a big problem for Absolutely, people. Absolutely, yeah. It is, it is a weird, very weird deck, I'd say. It's, uh, it's very strong at both going first and second, and it is not easy to deal with it at all, like, not even after yeah. siding, so... Like... It makes things awkward for the majority of uh, decks. For sure. I, I think it's a case of, if you look at the results from North American WCQ, um, the conversion of Thunder Dragon to Top Cut is roughly the same as conversion of Orcus to Top Cut and conversion of Striker to Top Cut and conversion of Salmon Great to Top Cut. So I don't think there's any one deck that gives you such a massive edge. It's more how familiar you are with your deck, yeah. how lucky you are in your matchups, and what side deck cards you have for the matchups. Yeah, it does depend on that. Overall, I would say the number one rule is just play something that you're confident with. Yeah. Especially if the tournament is as long as uh, the European Championship. For but sure. outside of that, there are definitely better decks. I would say Orcus is the worst at the moment, like in my personal opinion. I really don't see it uh, working out very well. Like it's it's so predictable. There is so many Lancia's Dwellers, Sanctums around. But it is still being played and it will still top the event, I'm pretty sure. Uh, it's oh, for sure. Yeah. I mean, like, if we do not see any Thunder Dragon in the top cut, I would be shocked. I would expect to see Thunder in, like, top eight at the very worst. Yeah. And okay. for tomorrow and Sunday, uh, we're actually going to have, uh, for the first time uh, in Europe, the third and fourth uh, that basically characterized uh, the USA Nationals yep. rather than European Championship. So three more people are going to go to the World Championship uh, on Sunday. And uh, that means that the finalists are there, but also the third place in total. Yeah. Um, so I think on the topic of why would you play Thunder Dragon over other decks, um, going second, I think it is a lot stronger than people really anticipated being. Because again, like we see that Salmon Great, if my opponent has a heretic seal of seven spheres, then you know that that can stop Salmon Great from playing a turn going second. Yeah, it's much more difficult to prevent the Thunder Dragon player from establishing some sort of board going second. And if they have enough dangers and cards like uh, Crusadia cards, they can often just 
play true a board of treat four pieces of interaction. And I don't think there's any other deck that really is capable of that. I don't think so at all. Especially because uh, it like at the beginning of the format it wasn't as now, but now with the Crusadia addition, like the deck plays just so well around Lancia and it requires your opponent to have a lot more answers than he should. Mm -hmm. And that means that you're gonna not only be the best deck going first, but a really good deck going second. Probably not the best going second. Yep. That's still Striker, I'd say. I mean, but it is by far the best going first. The deck. core fear of Thunder Dragon is if Mystic Mine is prevalent, regardless of how strong the deck is, you will lose matchups to mine. And that that is the fear, and that's what stops Thunder Dragon from being de facto best deck in the format, is because, you know, if your opponent goes set Metaverse, set Psalm Strike, yeah. you just lose. You I mean, you have lost that even game just one. set Metaverse. Yeah, and often guaranteed. just set Metaverse yeah. is fine. So you have that kind of ebb and flow in the format, and we've seen this in Nationals. In Nationals, mine was massive at the start of the season. And as the season progressed, we started biasing towards Thunder Dragon. But there's yeah. nothing to say that at this event, we won't see a swing back where suddenly everybody's playing mines and the Thunder Dragon decks just can't deal with that. Sure, at the same time though, after siding, it gets quite different. So they have a lot of outs, or you can see some Mad Men's, as Quincy did, where they main one copy of Spell Counselor. And yeah. they're just gonna draw into it at some point. Because game one, honestly, the mind decks are not really good at winning uh, quickly. In a short amount of time. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So if you even just play the one random copy, it could get you there. But of course, it makes more sense if you're playing at a playoff, not sure. if you're playing at a main event where you're actually going up against a lot of different decks and rogue strategies as well. Yeah. But yeah, Rafael has seen enough. He picks up his card and Jonas. Uh, is gonna win the first game. So, what would you be citing in here as Raphael, or do you just say I'm going first? Uh, I would say he's going first. I don't think. So let me check. He's playing uh, Chu Fantasme. So I would be surprised if he didn't switch those uh, for Lancia, I or for Ghost Ogre. Like either of those are probably much better going first. But outside of that, he shouldn't really side deck. Uh, for Jonas, uh, though, we're gonna see a lot more hand drops. As I was saying, Jonas wasn't feeling well the past week. Uh, he said in our interview that he got sick, so he couldn't play test that much. And he basically, uh, we can say copied, uh, not in a negative term, like Jesse Cotton uh, YCS Knoxville decklist. It is literally card by card, pretty much the same thing. Uh, slightly few, a couple differences in the side deck, but not in this matchup. So we're gonna see Gamma, No Material, and Lancia, uh, which means that there is a world in which Rafael tries to mind game him and let him start, but it is very brave. So I, I don't think you let your opponent start here. You usually never do, but there is a world in which you do that. Uh, but it probably depends on having a very good side deck. And I don't think Raphael Sidek is the best here. Yeah. Something that I would have really liked to see walking into this playoff, and it is something that no one was brave enough to do, was actually predict that there were not gonna be any Orcus in the top eight. And just not play Honestly, Lancia. yeah, and no and just cut Lancia completely, because Lancia is not that good against this version. So no. I, I'm not crazy on Lancia. Even something like Winged Dragon of Raw Sphere Mode would be a better yeah, card against but it. Yeah, just the draw and locks. I think I actually told... Uh, I was talking to Rafael a couple days before this event, and I was like, I think you should play draw, because it's such a good card in the mirror match. And we saw it last round with Joshua. And uh, I'm actually going to scold him after this one, because I just noticed that he didn't play draw in the side deck. Uh, hopefully, we'll still get there, but I think he's going to regret it now that there are only... Thunder Dragons left in, uh, in yeah, the event. For sure. I mean, there are scenarios where Lancia seals the game out. Oh, absolutely. But particularly since we've seen Thunder move over to the Crusadia engine, like, Lancia does a lot less. And, you know, if you're using a card from your hand in your deck, which cares about using every single resource you have available to climb as high as you can on the board, yeah. 
you know, Dettlancia is a very valuable resource, whereas Droll, at least Droll stops your opponent from progressing, you know, the, the cards that they have available. Yeah, it, I mean, it really depends on um, the experience of your opponents, but if you're playing at a top eight playoff with the best players, you expect your opponents to be very good. Okay, yeah. uh, quite a rough fan here from Rafael. Mm. And uh, oh, and we see two gammas and a no material, I think, for uh, That's Jonas. That's a really impactful hand. Like, that seems really But at strong. the same time, he doesn't have anything going on, because the rest of his hand is Wyvern Buster and uh, Roar. So that's yeah. where we can see if actually Rafael was brave enough to let him start, Jonas would have just passed here. He had completely nothing going on. Uh, now we are going to see some dangers from Rafael. And regardless of how this goes, uh, it's really good that Rafael actually has the Brotor available. It means he can summon it. Uh, uh, one common suit by Jonas, which is a huge deal here. For sure. Um, Thunder Dragon is really interesting because of how it interacts with the dangers. Yeah. So we see that Raph has two Jackalope in his hand, and getting that the extra Thunder Dragon uh, does make a significant Yeah, difference. it was definitely hoping that the two Chinon would have discarded one of the Jackalopes for sure. Unless uh, Jonas snaps them back to back, uh, it would be fine. Okay, so he doesn't get it, uh, and now we really hope to get any of the Thunder cards. He gets Crusadia, which is uh, pretty good here. Uh, he's gonna force out the home material and Gamma, whatever, but I think he is fine. Because as I said, Jonas doesn't have anything going on, and he really needs to pick up a set card at the moment, because otherwise I don't see him going anywhere in the zone. Dyro for the injured this time, it doesn't get snapped still, so he's gonna use it. Where do you have my normal material if you want us? Um, you could gamma the Sasha to stop the Alpha from being moved. We are going to have to see if he can find an opportunity that he thinks is as valuable as after an option. Yeah. Uh, we're just going to have to see what we, I mean, of course, discarding the Brute War uh, gives uh, Jonas some information about Gamma being uh, really bad, actually. Because if you Gamma and then the Brute War and Pioneer, that's not a good feeling. Yeah. Do you think of Gamma and Home Material are sufficient to... Okay, so he's defending access. Okay, he's on. very surprisingly using it there. The problem with this end is that the only out you have to know material is usually a less playing unicorn, and even then it's quite hard, is a linear. Yeah. And since you don't know that Rotor is there, if you almost have the level here, he's in Rafa. So this is gonna be tough. I'm pretty surprised by the normal deal though, it doesn't look very good there. But he's gonna get punched. So yeah. Gamma comes down, at least uh, Rafa is able to use Rotor. Yeah, he can use for sure, but for sure being able to shut down Sergio is quite okay. Is he picked up on the brother? Yes. So luckily he doesn't forget about it. He's gonna use brother here, use effect. Uh, which is a pretty big thing. He gets to discard Nasty as well. And let's remember that no matter what happens here, Jonas is completely stuck at the moment. Like his hand is not good at all. And he needs to pick up something from the top. I mean, even something like drawing a danger and give him the ability to start establishing the board. So, what do you go from here? You just get the cops there, or. I don't think the here is necessarily the best. It depends if he can manage to utilize his well. He has quite a few plays here. Um, yeah, 
I have a lot of lines, and basically he just seems to kind of refocus himself. He should know that Jonas isn't going to have any more interaction at this point. So he just, like, he has the information of what cards he has, and he can take time to figure out yeah. what is the correct line, and then fall down. But again, these are high pressure situations, and it might be a case that he misses something due to. Yeah, we definitely saw how, even though these players are the best among the group for this season, uh, nerves really got into them. We have multiple misplays we call them during the review rounds, which is something that you don't usually see from these kind of players, but they're putting everything on the line at the moment. So now he does get caught up Serpent. Okay, so get the PC, now we can... It's actually good for us to hear. Wow, that's that's surprising, yeah. So he does the call ups. Okay, and we're back. So um, he, the best row by far is uh, the other crusade, the other Draco, but he didn't use it yet. But let's see, that's quite a few good rows here. Let's see if you get anything interesting. Not the best, but it's, it's fair at the moment. Because once again, uh, unfortunately, Jonas doesn't have much, so... Yeah, Jonas needs to scroll something like suck his light and it back into it. Oh, he won't even get the to count anymore because he drivers yeah, went Unless so. drivers uh, destroyed for some odd reason, yeah. I don't think he ever destroyed driver here. I think it was, uh... Part of a sleep up here, I think. At some point, uh... Rafael could have also gone for the Dark Dragons before, but it was definitely not as ideal, so he rather... He went for through instead, which is okay. Probably slightly greedier, but... I don't think he wants to use the hand drops, uh, like, the best way he could. It seems like he kind of uh, just ruined them right there. Probably a little frustrated by the rest of his hand, to be fair. Yeah. I mean, I think Gammon is very interesting to reasonable, right? It's just an immaterial where... Yeah, I mean, usually you just normal see all the time the, uh, the beat cut there, and it should stop uh, most of the turns, as it had the need to do a lot. And yeah, it's pretty much here. It picks up cruising the Draco, and... At least, yeah, I can special summon. But you can't play any of the other cards in hand, right? Yeah, I mean, it's... He yeah, tried to do a few things, but it seems like it's quite difficult here. He's not wrong though, because he, he still has decent options where he just goes at tribute some um, Dragon Bar. For sure. So. It's such a frustrating position to be in. Someone here is gonna crash. Yeah. Something under fire user to reduce the damage that he takes. When I it's not the end of the world. You can probably play here at least. So, uh, throwing a crusade was uh, needed. It's probably the best row of time. I mean, he had a lot of trust, honestly, who were better than this, but set as lightning by far the best one. So now, uh, the problem is that. Dark uh, being hated by Colossus, so no surprise we see Mark, which he will use to try and shuffle back the Gamma for additional value. I'm going to shock a new river buster here, or at least going to say G Plus, yeah, and Lance is heading down. Yes. Lance comes down, uh, and 
we can see the crowd uh, going uh, crazy about this. Uh, we're not taking three. Um, gonna stop the camera back, but anyway, now we're gonna take three. Um, looking at Rattles back now, he's able to start in a few cards. Uh, it doesn't look like it is that different from what Lawrence has going on, but he decided to play both over instead of Gamma, which is uh, probably better if you throw more people as you want to do but yeah. so I mean, honestly, it's not really what you want to do. I mean, regardless, better you want to set case if you're the Gamma's there. Yeah, it wouldn't have matter. Uh, he does play Punk Cops, which is quite a good card to out. So we've just got an edge from our producers, we are going to be restarting the screen due to the audio issues, we will be right back with Game 3. 